What's up, Farming Family? How y'all doing today? Today, we're checking out the Thrive Azul 16mm. This is a blend of Kevlar and raw carbon fiber. I have a code for them. It's Farmer. If you use that at checkout, you'll get a 10% off. I will get a kickback. Thought I should let you know that. I was sent a 115 swing weight and a 118 swing weight. They do customizable swing weights. You can choose what swing weight you want on the website. So if you're wanting a strict, you know, specific swing weight, go on there and you can choose which one you want. I'm about to go over the RPMs, the specs, all that good stuff. So stay tuned. I hope y'all been doing good. The weight of these paddles come in at 8.1 to 8.3 ounces. The length of this paddle is 16.3 inches and the width is 7.7 .7 inches. This is a hybrid shaped paddle and the face is a carbon fiber slash Kevlar weave. Their grip circumference is four and a quarter inch. The handle length is five and a half inches. This paddle is thermoformed as foamed edges. It's a unibodied paddle. The core is polypropylene honeycomb core and the warranty is a four month warranty. The first thing we're going to talk about here is the pop. The 115 and 118 had identical pop. Didn't feel a difference in terms of that. What I will say though is, do y'all remember when the double black diamonds came out and they were considered stiff compared to the R1 Pulsars, the Valer Mach 1 Forzas, and stuff like that? That's kind of how this paddle is compared to, you know, the Pro Energy Line S. The Pro Energy Line S is a lot more plush than this paddle. This paddle has a stiffer face, very similar to the Mark Kinetic, which will, you know, be changed eventually to the Mark 1. But yeah, stiffness wise, it is almost identical to the Mark, you know, Mark 1. I couldn't tell switching between them. So when it comes to pop, they're both identical, but they are both stiffer than the Pro Energy Line S. Now, the difference is when it comes to the power. The 115 swing weight Azul that I used felt identical to the Mark Kinetic when I was swinging it for drives and serves and stuff like that. But the 118 swing weight did have notice, not like crazy noticeably more power than the Mark 1 did, but it did have some power that the Mark Kinetic didn't have. I keep going between the Kinetic and 1. They're the same paddle. But yeah, just know the 118 has more power than the Mark 1 does. But the 115 is basically identical to the Mark 1 in terms of power and pop. In terms of control, these have a stiffer face than a Pro Energy Line S, which means you're going to have to concentrate a little bit more. But if you've used the Double Black Diamond or if you've used any of the other Gen 2 Raw Carbon Fiber paddles and, you know, you've gotten used to them, you're going to be able to adjust to this no problems at all. With most of these Gen 2 raw carbon fiber paddles, the 60 millimeters, most of them, if you work on it, you can you can hone them in pretty easily. So control-wise, this is not going to be an issue for you. When it came to the spin of these paddles, the 115 swing weight had 1977, and the 118 swing weight had 1963 RPMs. So basically, when you're using these paddles, these paddles are going to perform like most of the Gen 2 raw carbon fiber paddles that are out right now. We're most of the blend paddles that are out right now. If you played with one of them and you're thinking about making the change to this, you're not going to notice an increase in spin or anything like that. It's going to be right on par with basically everything else that's out right now, except for the Volare, you know, Mach 2 Forza 16 to 14 millimeters and the Chorus Shapeshifter. But yeah, this one's right in line with every other paddle on the market right now that I've tested. So when it comes to the swing weight of this paddle, they offer 115 swing weights all the way up to 119. I tried the 115 and 118 out. And after playing the Mark 1, if I was going to choose a 115, I would probably go with the Mark 1. But I wanted the little extra power that the Thrive Azul had. So if I was going with the Thrive Azul, I would have to get a 118 or 119. Because if I got a 115, I would feel like I was probably wasting a little bit of money when I could just go with the Mark 1 instead. But overall, the swing weights are not going to affect you if you're used to other hybrid shaped paddles. So just be aware of that. If you're used to a hybrid, you can pick these up and use them with no problem. When it came to the twist weights of these, the 115 had a 6.73 twist weight. And the 118 had a 6.70 twist weight. So literally, just like the swing weights, it's right in line with all the other hybrid shapes. I did, there was not a twist weight difference between the two swing weight panels that were sent to me, so you don't really have you know a problem to worry about the 115 or the 119s being drastically different in twist weights because mine were literally 0.3 difference or something like that. It was basically nothing. And in terms of sweet spot, 
I'm just going to say ditto to what I said about the twist weight numbers. The sweet spot feels generous about as much as all the other hybrid shapes. When using them, you're not going to tell a drastic difference in the sweet spots between these hybrids. The only thing you're going to be able to tell a difference in is if you're switching from like an elongated to a hybrid or you're switching from a wide body to a hybrid. Other than that, this plays just like, you know, most of the other ones in terms of sweet spot. Okay, now this is where I have a hard time recommending the paddle, right? It's a $200 paddle and the Mark 1 is I think like $40 or $50 cheaper. And if I was going to get a 115 swing weight paddle between the two, I would definitely get the Mark 1 simply due to it being cheaper. But if, you know, someone is strictly wanting like a guaranteed swing weight, then you could always go with the Thrive Azul. But overall, I would recommend the Mark 1 over this paddle, basically due to the value. I wish this was, you know, $20, $30 cheaper. It'd make it easier to recommend. But since it plays very similar to the Mark 1, I can't recommend this compared to that paddle. I'll have that review out in the next week, week and a half, so stay tuned for that. But yeah, I'm, I'm not saying I didn't have fun with this paddle. This paddle is better than a lot of the other paddles that are on the market right now. I just don't like spending that much money on a paddle when I can get something that's a little bit cheaper that plays basically the same. But yeah, if you've played with this, comment down below. Let me know what you think about it. I'm very curious about y'all's opinion. Until next time, stay safe. Have a good day. Drink plenty of water. Peace, y'all.